Yeah, g'day, bush camp and tools here. Well, as you can see, we're up in the tropical rainforest here. Absolutely fantastic area. And today I've got with me something new from Extremo Ratio. Here it is here, let's just get a look at it. This is the retro looking AMF. Just check that out. See that there? That is a damn big knife. Let's take a closer look at it, all right? Okay, I want to talk about the specs of the knife. So on this AMF, it's a retro design, uh, you know, design inspiration, as Extrema said, from the 80s survival cutlery. The difference is this is, uh, as the name suggests, advanced. It's got N690 cobalt steel for the main blade and stainless fittings for everything else. The big thick guard here in the rear guard, the pommel, the stainless steel socket head there. Um, and there's also a, a, a fixing uh, bolt in there and you can look at the blog that I've written and it describes how this all comes apart can be filled strippable just with a three millimeter Allen key in there you can strip the whole thing down and I've had this under the water as you've already seen okay so I wanted to test the uh, AMF as a real survival knife and that for me meant taking this thing underwater doing some diving with it survival knife it's got to stand up to the rigors of everything that nature uh, can throw at it and more and, and that means being able to withstand corrosion that means uh, possibly at times it has to be submerged under the water you might have to use a survival knife in a diving situation let's face it there's lots of food that you can get uh, from diving having to go under the water and your knife's got to be able to not uh, fall apart on you a couple of weeks later because it's rusted to pieces as you can see here, I wasn't alone in this uh, small part of the, the river here. This was uh, quite a large freshwater eel here. And uh, one thing to note on the survival uh, note here is that the bit of included paracord that came uh, attached to the knife scabbard there at the base of the knife, it was just some camo paracord. It was acting as a basically a lure. This eel was quite curious and... and uh, and in no time whatsoever, it latched on, grabbed the, grabbed the uh, scab and tried to take off with the entire knife and everything underneath of a rock. I had to go uh, dive down and, and, and get the thing. Um, so, yeah, that was just a bit of a survival trick there. You can use a bit of cord. It's possible you may be able to lure fish in that you can eat with simply with a bit of cord. Uh, I had the knife in and out of the river here for approximately just over two hours and it had been wet uh, all day essentially uh, and later when I stripped this thing down there were really negligible signs of corrosion. Now the other thing about using a knife under the water I wanted to treat it just like a diving knife. I know it's not a diving knife but I wanted to treat it like that. The forepring grip is very very grippy underwater. There's no problems with holding on to the AMF under the water. It's not slippery in the hands whatsoever. The scabbard of the AMF also uh, floats in water if the knife is not in it, of course, and that's due mainly to uh, the uh, foam inserts surrounding, which are wedged, sewn in uh, between the cordura outer of the scabbard. So uh, if you don't have it attached to your belt, if it's not on your belt or it's not uh, lashed into a molly system on your pack and you've got it in the water and you take the knife out it is going to float so my advice is uh, that if you have to go under the water with this knife and scabbard that you have uh, uh, some cord from the from the scabbard to the knife so you don't lose it depending on how deep you you go because if you lose the scabbard it gets washed away in a river or in the ocean uh, then you're going to have to find some alternative okay we're going to move further upstream here on our little jungle adventure. The stream is easy, says a little lizard. Cat for snakes, look at these great pools, look at this. This is fantastic. Look at that, okay. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for over here. Fallen palm, we're going to take that. Okay, that palm heart up there.
easier. Right, we're going to get the farm heart. This part in here. Mm -hmm. Get this on. See that bit? Right, there you go. Palm heart. Okay. Let's get this baby out of here. do is to split this. See that there? Right, we need to get in there a bit more. You see that there? Now uh, here's the palm heart down the bottom, in here, this is it here, in here, see that? Look at that, that's the palm heart, can you see that there? Alright, that's exactly it, this, this bit here, let's try that, mmm, delicious, and you see big knife, no troubles with that, I better give some to my assistant. Mmm, that is delicious. That's it there. Hang on to that. Hang on to that. See that? Yeah. Mmm. That's really great. That's great. Okay, so I want to talk about grip positions with this uh, big knife. And uh, because they've got these really big guards on here, and there's not only is the forward guard, you've got an aft guard there, a rear guard there as well too. So first of all, let me talk about the rear guard. So if you've got the knife in this position here like this, your hands are down here, thumb and forefinger around here. Now my hand is about an eight, size eight hand, so you can see it can accommodate up to nine easy on here. If you're swinging this like this, uh, chopping, this is gonna give you a lot more power and the heaviest part of the knife is around in here. So, uh, and you see me do some cutting there with that on and off while I've been testing this out. So that gives you a lot of power there and you're not gonna slip off of that. Now you see here, this is not gonna the, the, the shape of this pommel is really cool because that's really smooth. That doesn't, at least in my hands, that doesn't uh, affect me whatsoever. I haven't been using this knife with gloves because I don't want to use it with gloves. I want to see how it is without gloves. So you've got that there. The other thing too is uh, when, when you're cutting vegetables around camp, you know, you grab the knife like this, wrap your hand around the back of the, 
the back of the uh, spine here and thumb like this and you can easily you know do the old vegetable peel like that but see you can really you know do some fine things with a big knife but you've got to know how to use it you know and this is an old trick it's not new chefs have been peeling things like this for centuries but I don't see much evidence of it on YouTube um, you know there you go for outdoors knives people using outdoors knives I don't see much evidence at all actually of preparing food really well with them but anyway yeah that's it there let's move on so that's a good strong grip like that also this grip like this you see this is away from me here this is not I have to put my wrist into an uncomfortable position for that to dig me in the wrist there was some concern about that initially but that would be really uncomfortable so if I want to uppercut like this with it forefinger in here I can get a good big solid grip this is not going to slip down onto big big guard here is not going to slip onto the blade accidentally impossible and I can thrust up there with a knife like that okay right this is a bit of a tip test with this this is hardwood Ugh. you see that's even though this tree's fallen it is just super like steel this stuff <clears throat> no problems with this you're not going to bust a tip <clears throat> this is a real jungle vine here just look at the spikes on this thing and i'm just going to carefully take some of those spikes off this is you know the knife came of course like all their knives deadly razor sharp out of the box i'm just going to take off those spikes just to demonstrate this but these vines can come in handy they're really strong i tried to pull it down out of the tree you can't they don't break very easily and just to get rid of some of these spikes off here just tap them off but we're going to cut this up here you see that there and this is one i do like a big guard because this you know can help avoid some injury on there and let's see this is pretty strong there you go like that so pretty simple like that uh, I prefer serrations on a knife for doing this thing but but that worked fine that now the, the other thing about this knife using a knife such as this with these funny looking guards like this is that if you're going to use it in the reverse position like this you've got to you know my hand there, there, there's an eye gauge of my hand there my hand is a, a size eight hand eight and a half putting on nine so if you've got like a hand which is not say nine and a half or ten or bigger you're gonna have a lot of trouble uh with this knife this knife is going to be too uh with this thing on here like this is not going to be any good for you. it's going to dig into your hand probably but eight and a half to nine size hand or whatever reverse grip on there's like that you see this here this comes behind my behind my uh uh, part of my base of my hand here so it's not going to dig into me and that way I can get this into me and 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 sharpen sticks like that with that and we'll have a look at that I'm gonna get a bit of a sharp point on this Here's a huge palm bracket which has fallen down. You see this thing here? And this is gonna be, uh, a, this can make a really great shelter. Look at that, we don't even have to, um, you know, climb a tree to get these things. You just gotta know where they are around the palms that have fallen off and that, and we're gonna cut this, all right? All right, this is excellent, this. We're gonna use this. Right. No problems with that. Okay, I'm gonna take that. You see that there? Look at that, that's great. Good for shelters, good for laying down on, putting food on, whatever. Okay, got one here, it's a nice one. Okay, come on. Cuts into that all right. There with that, top dollar fish. A scale of two. 
the good thing about fourpreen, it's not slippery when your hands are wet and covered in fish guts. Stomach contents, which is nothing. And this stuff can be used as bait. Or this. Alright, good bait. Yep. Alright. Australian hardwood. And plus, as I said before, with the guard, you can bang into things. And this is going to protect your hand on here, right? On there like that. With this. It's a big, strong knife. Mm. Right, let's have a look here. It's in carbon. This stuff's really super duper hard with this tree over the river here we'll just have a go at this see how this goes this stuff's like steel no rotten wood here super tough steel hardwoods that that is like steel this stuff how's that doing yeah that's still that's still pretty sharp that's for sure look at that's nail bright and sharp look at that nail bright and sharp all right let's do the real test here let's just hold it back here like that look at that see that there now bright and sharp okay Okay, I want to do the summary now. I've had this uh, Extrema Ratio uh, AMF out now for quite a while. Uh, I've given it a test. You've seen me do uh, many chopping tests with it. You've seen me cutting up different food items with it, from fish to vegetables. There's various different grips you can use on a big knife like this. Okay, as I've shown you, hand behind the guard like that. Can you see that there? Okay give you a good grip hand like this for peeling okay using a big knife for peeling uh, essentially as I said you know you see the retro look this it's a very hefty strongly built knife big thick tang in there goes all the way down uh, through this four print handle excellent grippy four print handle great in the wet out here diving around saw that big eel under the water uh, big chunky guards for me not a problem you've got the rear guard here you belt into something with this, you're not going to uh, damage your fingers. With my size hand, I've got a size 8 hand, it's going to protect the knuckles uh, from smashing into anything. That's a great thing there like that. So uh, it's a clip point, that's obvious, it's a flat clip point. Uh, some might liken it to a buoy, a bowie, buoy, bowie style knife. Uh, it's a cool design because, you know, uh, this shape, you know, as I said, it's been around since the 80s, survival cutlery, uh, inspired by that, as they say on their site. Can't fault it, really. It's, uh, you know, big, thick grip, comfortable, absorbs a lot of shock. The only negatives, I think, about the blade itself, and they're not really negatives, I guess, I would have liked to have seen tighter tolerances on the guard here. Now, this guard... You've got to remember the guard is not part, because the whole thing strips apart, the guard is not part of the blade. So the guard is up against fourpreen. Fourpreen is essentially a polymer. So when you're really whacking the daylights out of this knife, yes, this is going to move a slight bit, of course, because it's not attached to the plastic. It can't be. Uh, for me, I don't see that a problem. It can't come off. It's uh, really super thick, super strong. So. I like the knife. I think it's great in my hands. Anyway, it works quite well. It is a big knife, and it's the biggest knife I've got at eight and a quarter inches uh, from here to the tip, so it is a pretty big knife. But 
Yeah, it's really strong. Now they're calling it uh, a survival knife, and I've got to say, if you're out here in the wilds like this, and you've got to depend on a knife, I can certainly depend on this. And this is the only knife I've got with me out here. I've got my uh, helper with me too, you know, so I want to make sure that I'm really prepared out here. And I should say too, you know, I've got a compass, first aid, all that stuff, just to let you guys know you don't come out in the wilds unprepared. Just with a big knife, not enough. But let me get back to this. So, yeah, let's talk about the sheath now, the scabbard. Main construction is Cordura, as you can see. It's got lots of molly straps on it here, front and back. Uh, bottom loop here, nylon loop here, so you can tie it around your leg or put a bit of cord. I've just chained a bit of uh, the cord, the accessory cord that came with it, which was a bit of camo paracord. Uh, one press stud, as you've seen in the underwater video, you know, it's plastic on there, and brass fittings in there, you know, it didn't rust or anything like that, no corrosion. Let's put the knife down there for a second. Uh, you can use these malice straps on the back. They just uh, come like this, just like this. Right, okay, malice straps like that. They come out like that. Now, it says on the website, these, these are made in Italy by by Italian company called 2M. Okay, 2M in Italy, the 2M Molly system, 75. That just means 75 millimeters uh, on that. And they attach on the back of here. You can strap this onto a pack or any Molly compatible system there. They just slide onto that. Maybe it's right for you. The AMF by Extrema Ratio. Uh, yeah, check it out. Thanks for watching Bush Camping Tools here.